Hi students, today I am going to discuss about the key event in the pathogenesis of Campigas vulgaris. In this video, we are going to see what is acantholysis and the mechanisms behind it. Acantholysis is loss of adhesion or cohesion between the cells. It occurs because of the disruption of the desmosomes. Before going to desmosomes, we will see the layers of the skin. In epidermis, there are layers like stratum basale, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum and stratum corneum. Stratum lucidum is present only in palms and soles. The cells in the epidermis are glued to each, to each other with the help of desmosomes. The desmosomes ha has desmosomal catherines such as desmoglines and desmocholins. They both are seen as a transmembrane components and desmoplakin and placoglobin as cytoplasmic components. These desmosomal catherines are calcium dependent cell addition molecules and they show homophilic additions. That means one type of desmoglin will attach to the same type of the desmoglin of the other cell. The other end of the desmoglin is attached to placoglobin. Placoglobin in turn is attached to desmoplakin. Desmoplakin is attached to keratin intermediate filament. These structures to be intact for maintaining the proper structure of the keratinocyte. In Pemphigus vulgaris, antibodies produced against desmoglins, especially desmoglin 3 and desmoglin 1. When we look into the distribution of desmoglin 3, it is more in basal and suprabasal region. Desmoglin 1 is seen more in subcorneal region. When the antibody IgG goes and attached to the desmoglins, it causes disruption of the attachment between the desmoglins by mere steric hindrance. The other mechanism is it activates the phosphorylation of the cells by activating protein kinase C. This occurs with the help of phospholipase C and diacylglycerol. When cell phosphorylation occurs, it causes disruption of the attachment between placoglobin and desmoglin. This causes conformational changes in the desmoglin that is unable to maintain the proper addition. Placoglobin can also act as a transcription factor and alters the gene expression and in turn lead on to the UPA and UPAR synthesis and expression. That is urokinase plasminogen activator secretion and its receptor expression. They both are increased. This lead on to the formation of plasmin. Plasmin will cause proteolysis of the extracellular matrix. That means it dissolves the desmoglia. Recently, a novel human alpha-9 acetylcholine receptor regulating the keratinocyte addition has been found and it has also been found to be targeted in case of pemphigus vulgaris autoantibodies. This novel class of cholinergic receptors with dual muscarinic and nicotinic nature are found to regulate the intracellular calcium metabolism. Non-neuronal acetylcholines are found to be synthesized by the keratinocytes and they play an important role in cell addition and it maintains the intercellular space and it also maintains the polygonal shape of the keratinocytes. When antibodies goes and attach to the acetylcholine receptor alpha 9 and pemphaxin, this lead on to the blockage of calcium influx involved in desmosome assembly and also result in protein kinase C activation. There is one type of protein kinase that is protein kinase or like endoplasmic reticulum kinase PERC. When this gets phosphorylated, the structural proteins collapse leading on to cytoskeletal collapse and weakening of intercellular junctions. And this novel PERC receptor has also a role in activating the caspase cycle leading on to acantholysis by apoptosis mechanism. Thus, detachment of the attachment block that is tonofilaments, disruption of the desmosomes, dissolution of the glycocalyx and degeneration of the cells occur in 
acantholysis. When we look into the histopathology of pemphigus vulgaris, we see a suprabasal bulla. Why suprabasal bulla? The basal cells are attached to the basement membrane with the help of hemidesmosomes. Hemidesmosomes are not at all disturbed in case of pemphigus vulgaris. That is why the cells are attached in the basement membrane but their side to side attachment gets disrupted. That is why the cells look like tombstones. Inside the bulla, we can see the acantholytic cell. In a nutshell, what is the conventional concept is when the immunoglobulin G it goes and attach to the desmoglein, especially this place, uh, this is holding true in case of anti-desmoglein 3 autoantibodies. So, when the desmoglein 3 of one cell is attached to the desmoglein 3 of the other cell, this autoantibody goes and attached between this these two molecules. This is known as steric hindrance. But in case of anti-desmoglein 1 autoantibodies, they say this doesn't happen because of steric hindrance. This occurs because through other mechanisms. That is a conventional concept. What are the new theories? The new theory, the first one is basal cell shrinkage theory. In basal cell shrinkage theory, when there is the phosphorylation of the addition molecules and the structural proteins, it causes shrinkage of the cells. When the cells get shrinks, the desmosomes are not able to maintain the adherence and they separate and acantholysis sets in. What is the other theory? Apoptolysis theory. In apoptolysis theory, they say rather than the anti-desmoglein antibodies, there are some non-desmoglein antibodies. They are the one which are triggering the event of apoptosis. How? These non-desmoglein antibodies, when they go and attach to the cell like a receptor ligand, it activates the cellular signal leading on to the increase in the cellular calcium level. When the cellular calcium level is increased, it activates the death cascade of apoptosis using caspase enzymes. These caspase enzymes, what this happens, it interferes with the cortical actin filaments. What are actin filaments? We have heard about actin only in muscle cells. They say there are six types of actin. Four of them are playing major role in muscles and two types are present in non-muscular cells. That is, in all eukaryotic cells, actin plays a major role in maintaining the cytoskeleton of the cell. When this actin gets disturbed by this antibodies, it causes apoptosis of the cells. This is the apoptolysis theory. The other theory is the multiple hit hypothesis. In multiple hit hypothesis, they say the acetylcholine receptors are major role. When the acetylcholine receptors are occupied by the anti-desmoglein antibodies or anti pemphigus vulgaris antibodies, they go and disturb the structural integrity of the cell by interfering with the <coughs> desmosomal function and that causes sloughing of the desmosomes. These sloughed desmosomes, they try and they go and occupy the intercellular space. This sloughed desmosomes in turn activates the multiple scavenging autoantibodies. When these scavenging autoantibodies try occupying the intercellular space, it does not help in formation of new desmosomes. That is, it hinders with the new desmosomes generation. Thus, it lead on to the acantholysis. They also say, in pemphigus vulgaris, there are T cells that play a major role in causing these antibody production. So, in a nutshell, we have steric hindrance and apoptolysis theory, basal cell shrinkage theory, multiple Hit hypo uh, multiple hit hypothesis and T cells. They all play a major role in bringing out this acantholysis. Hope you have understood the mechanism behind the acantholysis. Thank you for watching my channel. Please subscribe and leave your comments here. Thank you. Oh, <laughs>